you know, during this year, there have been a lot of issues in our lives that God has put his finger on. And one of the biggest issues has been meaningful connection. We have our cell phones, we have social media, Zoom calls, but loneliness is bigger and a bigger issue than ever. And our next guest is a pastor and author of the book, The Loneliness Solution. And he joins us to help us find meaningful connection in a very disconnected world. Pastor Jack Eason, welcome to Hope Today. Hey, Amy, how are you? So good. What a great topic. What a great subject for this particular time. Did you write it specifically for this season? Yeah, I had, my God and I had an inside connection. I knew over a year ago. The pan, no, I had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> no idea. I turned the uh, manuscript in last November. And uh, I mean, loneliness was an issue before COVID. It'll be a, an issue after uh, COVID is over, but especially now, isn't it amazing? It just God's timing uh, to be talking about loneliness in the midst of what our country and our world really is going through. Yeah. You, you know, I uh, think about the loneliness, and and you know, we have a, we have a twenty four hour prayer line here, and people can call at any time, and and sometimes they're lonely, and I've I've answered those calls, and I've talked to people that that feel disconnected before the pandemic ever happened. But you know, in your in your book, Jack, you, you have something. The last five words I looked at, uh, at uh, I just had to write them down because it said, "Friendship is waiting for you," and I think that's an encouraging word that people need to hear in this time. Yeah, yeah you know, and we all need friends. And I think what really confuses the issue, even before COVID, uh, we've redefined friendship in our world, right? I mean, we have our social media accounts, and I can add or subtract friends with a mouse click. You know, I have 3,000 plus whatever Facebook friends, but yeah. how, how many of those could I actually call oh. at 2 a.m. to come to my house and help me with something? Yeah, probably not very many. Mm -hmm. So we really got to, I think what is happening right now in our world is really reminding us, I, I hope we're not going to miss the lessons God has for us during this time, but I hope we're being reminded what real friendship, what real connection uh, is all about. Where would somebody begin if they're feeling lonely? What's like that next action step for them? You know, you, you guys have already talked about it, actually. and I love that. Help someone else. You know, it's amazing when you turn your eyes towards someone else, whether it's helping with meals or helping volunteer. Uh, we're in that season of the year where soup kitchens and rescue missions are going to be needing help like never before. Uh, ministering to the homeless. And when you start pouring yourself into other people, it's it's amazing how you start looking at your own situation and going, you know, it's, things aren't really that bad for me. Look at look over here. And God can really use you uh, volunteering. We, we had in our area just a few weeks ago, uh, a storm come through and uh, an elderly lady down the street, several huge trees had blown over. And we have a neighborhood, this is a good way to use social media, neighborhood, neighborhood uh, Facebook page. And some guys said, hey, what are we going to do if this lady has to hire a company to come in and clean this up? You know, she's living on Social Security, be several thousand dollars. She can't afford it. If you're if you're a guy, you have a chainsaw show up Saturday at 8 a.m. Next thing we know, there's 20 guys down there with chainsaws <laughs> and building connection and community over over something that they volunteered to do. And many of those guys are now meeting every week, having coffee together. So, I mean, you know, it's the simple things, as you said earlier, to be the hands and feet of Christ is so important, but I think we miss a key part of that uh, part of that equation. That is having the, the, the eyes of Jesus. You know, the Bible tells us that Jesus saw the people and when he saw them, that's when he had compassion. And so, so many times we wonder how can we be the hands and feet? It starts with uh, having his eyes and having an awareness of what's going on around us. So volunteering is a great way to get out of this loneliness kind of blah that you might be in right now. You know, uh... I love that chainsaw story because, you know, I'm an office worker with a chainsaw. So as soon as there's an opportunity to start the chainsaw up, you know, you want to go be somewhere. So uh, but uh, let me ask you, you, you uh, stated in the book, uh, a lesson we can learn from Airbnb. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, Tom, I was watching this interview. This has been many years ago with the guys who, who co-founded Airbnb. And, and one of the comments that one of the guys said is, we didn't start Airbnb to make money. So I'm thinking, okay, this is interesting. Why did you, why did you start this? By the way, they're the number one hospitality entity in the world now, which is amazing. Wow. Um, but he said, we started this because we really wanted to build community. 
And I'm thinking, okay, this is weird. Uh, how, how does that happen? And he, and he talked about things that we, most of us probably use now, like Amazon and Uber. And he talked about how when those things came out new, people are a little, a little weary about doing that because it was an unknown thing. Okay, can I, can I order something, have it delivered to my house? Can I get in someone else's car and then take me somewhere? That's really weird. And these guys said, you know, to move someone from the unknown to the known, there's this great chasm. And to cross the chasm is risk, but the bridge to cross this chasm is trust. And then one of them said something like this. They said, you know, if we just wanted to build Airbnb around uh, making money, money is the currency of transactions, but trust is the currency of interactions. And I'm pulling out a pen and paper and I'm just making notes feverishly going, wow, you're, you're talking about. Uh, the church, you're talking about us, you're talking about us as humans, because we need interaction. And and the problem is, especially for younger people who are the most disconnected on the planet right now, uh, our trust has been broken. I mean, our trust has been broken with maybe parents whose marriage didn't stay together, or friends who have let us down, or, or dare I say it, unfortunately, maybe even a church has let you down. Well, welcome to the real world. We're flawed people. Uh, and so we've got to realize that though our trust is sometimes broken, there's one in whom we can place our trust who will never let us down. And that's the author of Real Genuine Community, the, the God who created us and wired us for community. So um, great lesson for me, at least from Airbnb to say, you know what, trust is a very, very big issue when you talk about connecting. Pastor Jack, I just love how you're talking about Airbnb and trust. And when you pointed out about the younger generation, because I can really relate to that. A lot of my friends, when we talk about when it comes to our relationships now and different things, because of the breakdown in family, because of the things that we've walked in, we do have a serious trust issue. So how do we build trust? How do we gain trust with people? Because I think a common thing when you don't have trust is you isolate and you become lonely. Yeah. So how do we deal with that? Yeah, Sydney, you're so true. I, I have a lot of 20 something friends. I'm not sure if they're my friends to, to keep me young or for me to try to make them feel old. But I was talking to one the other day and, and he, he was, he's still trying to find a faith community. And I asked him this question. I said, uh, have you ever gone to a restaurant where you've had bad service? And he said, well, yeah, sure. I said, so did you stop going out to eat at restaurants? And he said, no, absolutely not. And I said, well, it's kind of the same way. You have to keep making an investment and keep pushing forward. And so to a lot of people that age, I say, you've got to be willing to invest. It's interesting to me that you're willing to invest when it comes to uh, getting better physically, maybe working out. You're willing to invest there. You're, you're willing to invest when it comes to learning a musical instrument. You're willing to invest academically. Well, hey, in relationships, you have to be willing to invest. Those of us who are older, maybe you've been married 24 years like myself. Uh, trust me, my wife has made a lot of investment. And uh, a lot of it is time. And, and uh, a mentor told me years ago, I'm sure you, you all have heard this, that you spell, t uh, you spell love T-I-M-E. So if you're really wanting to build a relationship of trust, it takes time. It takes time. And sometimes it means failing. And sometimes it means someone lets you down. Sometimes it means you let someone else down. Uh, but it is worth it. So to that person, I would just say, be willing to make an investment of time. And I will give you a, a money back guarantee that if you will do that, the God of the universe will connect you in time with a group of people with whom you can have real relationship and genuine relationship, authenticity, all those strong words that will not only help you grow, but the, the way God's wired you and gifted you, you actually will help them grow too, which is awesome. I mean, who, who could have thought about that but the God of the universe? I mean, it's mind blowing to me that that, is, that was his idea from the beginning was the power of community. What are some signs that maybe there's a problem um, with loneliness in your life. For instance, people that have really deceived themselves to think that all of their social media friends are their intimate, real friends. You know, what would you, what are some things or some signs to look for? Yeah, I, I think if you find yourself uh, not with a, not with a group uh, to whom you can really be accountable and real, um, uh, that, that, that's a, that's a sign. If you don't have someone you can call at 2 a.m. in the morning and say, Hey, I got a, I got have a, I have a problem. Th that's a sign. And, uh, you know, as, as an older person, I would just say, don't wait until you're 40 or 50 or older to, to think about creating those friendships because friendships do take time. Mm -hmm. So if you feel like you're in one of those situations where you're just not filing real connectivity, 
And I think one of the things, again, that we're experiencing over these last seven or eight months is a lot of those people that we're talking about who fall in that age group, maybe the early 20s, have told me, wow, yeah, I can connect digitally and that's great, but I'm realizing and really missing physical connection Mm -hmm. and the power of touch and the power of hugging and handshakes and high fives and all those things, which is how God wired us. So find that kind of connection and, and it's there and God has it for you. And again, friendship is waiting for you but you've got to slow down. And I think the other thing that has happened for that age group, and even in our family, I have two, two kids who fall into this category. Um, it's amazing. We actually have sat down and had a meal around the table together. And, and pre-COVID, we really didn't do that because we're all running in the same direction. But because a lot of restaurants are closed down, it's like, oh, we'll just cook at home. And you know what's amazing is you sit around the table and that's where some real conversation happens and real connection happens. And uh, I think they might have done something like that in, in the Bible, in the, in the early Christian days. How about that? <laughs> you, you know, Jack, uh, one of the things, um, sometimes I think just a simple thing uh, helps a lot. And in the book you mentioned about in England where they put chat benches where if people just wanted to chat, they, this was a bench where they, you could sit and a stranger would sit beside you and you'd uh-huh. chat. And it reminded me of when we sent Sydney down into downtown Pittsburgh before <laughs> COVID hit. Uh, a couple years ago and just had her start talking to people and we had some tremendous interviews with people that want to share their hearts uh, and and sometimes it just takes one little step like that to change everything. It, it does. Pe- people are waiting and uh, and again you just got to be aware of that. Uh, I, I uh, frequented a local coffee shop in the midst of writing this book and uh, I went into the uh, coffee shop and, and started developing this relationship with a lady there named Connie. We would sit, uh, I'd sit there and, and they got to know me so well, you guys, when I, I'm a sweet tea drinker, I'm not a coffee drinker, but they would have my sweet tea sitting on the counter, be ready for me when I came in. And I got to have this relationship with her. And so I came in one day and before I even parked the car, she already had the sweet tea sitting on the table and I sat down and she came by and she just said, hey, by the way, she, she had figured this out about me just from, I guess, studying my Bible. While I was there, she said, would you pray that uh, I have a need? I need a car. I said, okay, great. Well, the last thing I heard, she, she continued to talk, but this, this voice was reverberating in my heart. You're supposed to give her your car. You're supposed to give her your car. And I'm thinking, what in the world? She finally walks away. Guys, I was so rattled by the Holy Spirit. I got up, got in the car, drove home. I walk in the door. I, I'm trying to explain to my wife what just happens, and I can't even speak. I just start crying. She thought I'd run over someone. She's like, what happened? Did you wreck the car? What happened? And I'm telling her this, what happened, and she just said, so so, what do you think? And I said, well, what do you think we should do? She said, well, if God's told you to give her the car, then that's what you need to do. And so uh, I, I got back in the car. Uh, well, actually, before I got in the car, my phone rings. And, uh, and Connie says, hey, do you realize you left your laptop up here and your book bag and everything? Get back up here. I was like, oh, my gosh. So I go back up there. Long story short, about a, a mile back, God uh, is sp- speaking to my heart. I'm trying to talk myself out of it, thinking, OK, maybe I had bad pizza last night and it wasn't the Holy Spirit. But uh, I pull up in the parking space, pull the keys out. She's sweeping the front walk. And I, I hand her the keys and she said, what are you doing? I said, this with a car like this work. And she said, sure. And I said, uh, well, then this is yours. And she she started to weep. I started to weep. And guys, just in that moment, but part of community, part of connecting is listening to God's voice and being able to meet the needs of other people. Yeah. And uh, that's where awesome connection happens when the Holy Spirit starts using you. And I hope that you'll discover that in your life because that's what, the way God wired us and what God intends for us. 